Well, some nights, some nights it is just impossible to sleep. Nights when worry or regret, nights when grief unsettle our soul. Some nights all you want to do is to turn that time to undo what has been done, to savor a joy that you now know will soon be lost. But you can't. You can't go back. All you can do is lay awake, wrestling with your restlessness as you wait for morning. The eve of that first Easter was such a night for the disciples. But Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene could not wait until morning. Instead, while it was still dark before the dawn, she got out of bed in her restlessness and she followed a memory. Whenever she had needed hope in the past, whenever she had needed to touch joy again after a time of pain, to feel the presence of God, what she had done is to go to Jesus. And so she went to him now, to his tomb, walking in that pre-dawn darkness. She remembered how it was just a short week ago when Jesus talked, when he healed amongst the crowds. It was like everyone was caught up in a whirlwind, a blowing breeze of blessing, not just for her, but for the thousands that had gathered. And that Holy Spirit-like wind that arose from Jesus, it was changing their world. It was changing the world. On its wings, everything seemed possible. But that wind, it no longer blew. Nothing seemed possible now. An unnatural stillness, a dead calm had descended on the disciples and within them as well. What fears keep you up in the pre-dawn darkness as it did Mary? What worries in your life, what anxiety, what questions unanswered steal your sleep from you? What Easter hope fulfilled would bring new life into your life and make your soul sing today? Ezekiel was only a boy when Jerusalem was destroyed and he and thousands of others were carried away into Babylon, into exile. In a day, everything in their lives was turned upside down. Everything they relied on, everything that they knew, it was suddenly gone. Why, they asked, what now? They feared. And then God, in a vision, showed Ezekiel a valley. And that valley, it was full of dry bones, but it was empty of life. Can these bones live again? God asked. Only you know, replied Ezekiel. And then God told Ezekiel, breathe. Ezekiel, into this valley, this empty lifelessness, breathe. Breathe words of hope. Breathe out the Spirit of God that lives within you. And Ezekiel did. And the valley came to life. When Mary Magdalene arrived at the tomb, she found that it was open but it was empty, as empty as she felt. But then she looked again, and she noticed that the tomb was not completely empty. It was only mostly empty. And that makes all the difference in the world. For there, in that tomb, there were two angels. And those two angels spoke words of hope, words of encouragement that breathed new life into Mary. 
Jesus, they said, whom you seek, he is alive. He has risen, and he waits for you up ahead. The angel's message shared gave Mary the courage to begin life again, to believe again, to seek joy again. And then Mary became an angel herself of sorts, a messenger of God, like Ezekiel. She shared the breath of life that had been given to her by the angels with others who felt as empty and lifeless as she had. And the wind, that gentle, refreshing, life-giving breeze that had died, into a dead calm, it started to whisper and blow again. But maybe you don't think that your breath, that the Spirit of God that lives in you, is strong enough to make a difference in the world as it did being projected by Ezekiel and Mary. Maybe you don't think that you are worthy to serve as an angel with a message of hope that can bring blessing and a sense of new life to others and change this world. But that is not true. Let me show you. Take that little vial of bubbles, that little bottle that you have. Take it out, but don't blow in it just yet. Timing is everything. Now, as you take that tube of bubbles out, if you've ever been to Easter worship here at the Church by the Sea before, you know it's only a matter of time before the bubbles are broken out. Now is that time. So take out that wand. Again, don't blow it just yet. First, take a look at the wand. Notice how much it looks like a bone. I would say a hip bone, but I'm not a medical doctor. It is not a dry bone, it is wet after all being in the tomb, but it is a bone nonetheless. Now imagine once again, whatever it is, bring into your mind thoughts of whatever it is that keeps you up at night, that unsettles your soul, or call whatever it is that makes you ask why, what next? Imagine what steals from you, your peace. Now imagine God asking you, as God asked Ezekiel, can these bones, your bones, your dreams, can they live again? Can joy be restored after grief? Can hope be rekindled when hope before had proven hollow? And with this on your mind, now is the time. Take out your wand and blow. Blow. Blow the spirit, the life of God that lives within you. Blow it out into the sanctuary. Blow it as if you have a message of hope within you. Blow that hope out, that prayer out into the world. And do it again, and do it again and again, now and throughout the service. Spontaneous eruptions of joy for the life and grace of God. It's never an interruption. In fact, it is an eloquent preaching without words of the joyful message of the day. Now look what your friend has done. It has transformed this place. I hear laughter rippling through. I hear awe rippling through. We started by bringing up all the things that wouldn't even let us sleep. It changed. It changed. And it changes any time that we blow the hope, the light, the breath of God that lives within us into the world. Easter is a gift. And it is also a responsibility. 
It is a gift of new life, a fresh breath in an otherwise jaded world. But like Ezekiel and like Mary Magdalene, it comes with a responsibility to share the breath of hope and new life with others who feel empty and alone and desperate, that they too may come to feel the awe and the laughter, the joy, the love, and the life of God. So take these bubbles home with you. Take them to work if you're so bold, but don't take them in your car. And when fear grips you, you start to lose hope facing some kind of hardship or emptiness. If you face something that begins to steal your sleep or peace, take these bubbles out. Let them remind you that God's Spirit, the breath that has the power to give life and transform pain into joy, lives inside of you, right inside of you. And if it can transform a tomb into a cradle of life, if it can transform a jelly bean into a butterfly, sort of, <laughs> imagine what it can do for you and your life. May it be so. Amen.